we looked at how to handle these accumulation functions geometrically on graphs. How do we handle them symbolically? This type of question tends to come up quite often on the AP exam because if you know what you're doing, then you can get the answer extremely quickly and then you can spend some more time on other questions which are gonna require a little more calculations. So here's the deal. I'm gonna show it to you the long way, but then notice what the answer is and let's make sure that you understand the quick, easy way to get these solutions. What we're being asked to do right here is take the derivative of this uh, accumulation function up here, all right? so. We, we have the integral from 1 to x of 3t squared minus 8t dt. And after we get that, we want to derive it, okay? So if we were to actually solve this different, definite integral, okay, well, that means we have to start by doing the antiderivative, and then we would plug in our bounds. But keep in mind that we have to take the derivative at the end. So as we talked about in the previous video, watch where all this goes, okay? So we have the antiderivative of 3t squared, that's gonna be t cubed, and then 8t is gonna become 4t squared. Those using our antiderivative rules that we've talked about, and yeah, because this is technically 3t cubed over three, but we eliminate the threes, and this is 8t squared over two, but eight divided by two is really four, okay? Now that's being evaluated from one to x, so we've got this going on right here. If you keep in mind, we still have the ddx out front, like so. Okay, so we're going to derive everything once we finish doing the antiderivative. Okay, let's do work that on with the theorem of calculus. We plug in the x first, so it's going to be x cubed minus 4x squared, right? and we plug in the 1 second. So minus, and we're going to have 1 minus 4. When we plug in 1, we get 1 cubed minus 4 times 1 squared, so it's 1 minus 4. All right, keep in mind we're still taking the derivative of all this, so it's the derivative of all this. Okay, so what do we want to do? Well, you want to neaten that up a little bit. So we have x cubed minus 4x squared, and then this is negative 3, but we're subtracting negative 3, so it's actually plus 3. All right, so we have plus 3, and we're taking the derivative of that. And this is a nice, easy derivative to do. We've been doing our rules since forever. So we go, okay, x cubed, that derives to 3x squared. All right. 4x squared derives to 8x, and 3 derives to nothing. Look what our answer is. Look what we started with. Can you see how you get the answer real quick? Take your integrand, keep everything except for the variable. Whatever the t variable in this case, it doesn't always have to be t, but whatever that variable is, it gets replaced with the variable in the upper bound. Put an x here and here, and we have our solution. So yes, can you do it out the long way? Absolutely. But it's so much better to do it the quick way. Look at example number two. All right. If you think you know what's going on, pause the video and solve this in less than 10 seconds. All right. So if you did that, then we realize all we're going to do is we're going to put the x here, here, and here. That's it. Everything else goes away. All right. So we're going to have the fourth root and it's going to be x cubed plus e to the x minus 3x. And that's it. Because the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the integral and the derivative are inverse operations. They wipe each other out. That's what happens. All the derivative symbols, differential, antiderivatives, they're all gone. And all that's left is just the integrand there. The only change is the variable.